In the previous video, we have created a texture for this model using Blender's painting tools. As we saw, the low resolution of the texture makes the model look bad, and using it like this in a video game would be unacceptable. The solution is not to increase the resolution, but to change the way the colors or materials are distributed in the UV map. To avoid having to repaint the texture after doing changes to the mesh, we will add materials to the model that we can bake into a texture in a quick way. So let's start. We know that this texture that we have painted is being applied to the model, but how does Blender know exactly which texture to use? This is established in the material of the model, which can be found in the material tab of the properties area. As we see, there is a material called material that has a bunch of parameters, but the one we have to pay attention to now is the base color, whose value is a reference to the texture we had painted, that is, painted texture. Now, since I will follow a different approach this time, I will want to add multiple materials to the model, but I want also to keep it as it is right now for future reference. So I will make a copy with Shift D and right click to cancel the movement. The new mesh has been called Mesh.001 because it has taken the name of the original one, Mesh, and then added a number to make a unique name. We can rename with double click and change it to Materials Mesh. I can hide the original mesh since I will work only with a new one. The material shown here is the one with the painted texture, but I don't want it anymore in this copy of the model, so we can remove it by pressing the minus sign. We see that the texture has disappeared from the model, and we will create new materials that will correspond exactly to the regions we have already established in the face maps. To make the process faster, I have prepared the script that you can use. You will find the link in the description and you can download it or just copy the text. And in Blender, change to the scripting workspace, open a new text file, paste the text of the script and press run script. Now if we change to the material tab, we will find different materials with names that match those of the face maps. And we can select any material, enter edit mode, press select and see that in fact the materials are assigned in the same regions as their corresponding face maps. We change to the shading workspace where we can configure the materials nodes. We start by modifying the skin material. We press on use nodes and now we see a node representation of the material in the shader editor. We have to change the base color in this shader node and we can use the colors we have saved in the palette. But to have access to the palette, I will change to the texture paint in the 3D view and I will get another properties panel here. I change the mode to single image and add a new image. This is just to see the palette we have saved previously, so it's just a temporary image. Doesn't really matter what specifications we use to create the image, but after creating it, we see that it appears the palette with the colors we have used before, so now we can reuse them. To assign the base color of the skin material, we may click over it and in the color picker, we can use the sampler to pick a color from the screen. In this case, we make left click over the skin color in our palette. We continue with the process of assigning the colors for the rest of the materials. We see that the model looks washed out. That's because we are using this temporary texture. We have to close it and immediately the colors are fixed. As we can see, there are no resolution problems when using multiple materials because we are not using a texture and the colors are being applied per face, making each material region perfectly defined. Probably you will be tempted to use the model this way and to export it to a game engine for creating your video game. But be aware that in game engines like Godot, having multiple materials come at a price in performance. Even worse, for this model we are using a whole material for a very tiny part like the pupils. So having a texture for the character is still the best option. And for that, we are going to bake the different materials into a single texture. For the baking process, it is important to have set a texture inside the material to let Blender know to which texture it should be baking to. To add an image texture node, press Shift A, Texture, Image Texture. We can create here a new texture. In name, I write Bake a Texture. Set the size to be 512 by 512, white blank color and no alpha channel. Because we are using many materials, it will be easier if we encapsulate this texture node into a group by pressing Shift A. 
group make group this will open the group node and we can exit by pressing tab we copy the node with ctrl c and then we have to paste it in the rest of the materials with ctrl v Now, if we go to one of the materials and change the texture inside the group node, that change will be reflected in all of the materials, making it easy to change the active texture. Let's open the baked texture in the image editor. And now we can go to the render tab. Change the render engine to cycles. Go to the bake section. In bake type, select diffuse. Make sure that only color is selected. It's okay with a margin of 8 pixels. And press bake. After finishing, we see the resulting texture. It is evident that the color of the skin doesn't correspond to the one we have assigned. Apparently, there is a bug in the version of Blender that I'm using that has to do with the color sampler, but it's easy to fix. We see that this value is greater than 1. This shouldn't happen, so just tweak the color value and it will be fine. The big advantage of this method of our painting is that every change you want to make to the texture will only imply a rebaking of the materials, making it an automated process. With the texture bake, we now can visualize it applied to our model. We can use the model called Mesh that already has a material with a texture applied to it. And to see it, I have to unhide it clicking on this icon. Just be aware that here in the outliner, the highlighted object is this mesh, but we see in the shader editor that the active material is a skin, which belongs to the materials mesh. That's because the active object is actually materials mesh, and that is indicated by the yellow circle surrounding the object icon next to the name. If we want to change the active object, we must be in object mode and now if we select this mesh object it becomes active the yellow circle appears next to the name and in the shader editor the active material becomes the material of that mesh now we can change the image used for texture in the model something you should know is that now that we have selected the new texture if we expand the available textures we see this zero next to the painted texture that means that there are zero instances of the texture in use which will make blender ignore the texture and after saving and reopening the file this texture won't be here anymore this will be the same for all the resources that blender uses if we want to keep a resource that isn't being used we can always save a copy of it by pressing this icon now if we change the texture we see that the painted texture has an f next to it which stands for fake user meaning that even if nobody is using such resource blender will keep it back to the model we hide the mesh with the different materials to only see the one with the texture and of course we still have the same resolution problem as before but now we have an automated way to generate our texture and we can make changes in our mesh and bake the texture again very quickly don't forget to save the texture with pack as png to improve the texture without increasing the resolution we just have to follow the idea of material isolation we need to modify the uv map and make sure that the faces that have different colors are separated in the texture go to the uv editing workspace and i will change the uvs of the materials mesh Go to edit mode, I don't want to display the stretch. Then go to the face map section, select the mode face map, go to select, select loops, select boundary loop. This will select only the outer edges of the mode region. Then Ctrl E and mark seam. Do the same for the eyes and iris regions. We can ungrab again, but we want to ungrab only the regions we have changed. So select only the face maps corresponding to the mouth, eyes, iris, and pupils. Press U and select ungrab. Whenever we ungrab this way, Blender's algorithm will try to extend the ungrabbed UVs to cover the largest possible area in the UV map. But of course, these regions are now huge in proportion to the rest of the body. We have to rescale and reposition the selected UVs. We need to move them apart to be isolated by pressing G. And we can rotate the UVs if we need it by pressing R. To have a guide, we can open the baked texture. In this way, we have a reference of how big these parts should be. Here, I'm taking the mouth as a reference to scale all the modified UVs. Once they have been properly rescaled, we find a place to put them. We select all the faces. Now that we are improving the texture, it's a good moment to make some adjustments to the UV map. Down here, we see some of the UV islands very close to the border, leaving no space for the margins. We can rearrange by moving this up. We exit edit mode, go to the render tab and press bake. 
we hide the materials mesh and show the mesh with the baked texture. We see that all facial features have disappeared. That's because this mesh has the old UV map. The mouth and the eyes are mapped into a region of the texture that now has been colored as the skin. We exit edit mode. To pass the UV data from the modified mesh to this one, we first select the original one, mesh, and then the modified one, materials texture. This will make materials texture the active object. And by pressing Ctrl L transfer UV maps, we will transfer the UV data from the active object to the other one. We select this mesh, enter edit mode. We don't see any of the seams we did in the other model. That information was not transferred, but we do see the UV map is the same as in the other mesh. I will hide the materials mesh to be sure we are looking at the model with the baked texture. As you can see, the resolution problem has been solved. In the material tab, we see that we are actually looking at the material using the baked texture as base color. And very important, go to image, pack as PNG. One last thing I want to try in this tutorial is to make a very low resolution version of the texture and see how it works. Create a new texture, I would call it low res texture. It will be half the size of the original one. Select the materials mesh, go to the shading workspace, open the texture group and change the texture to the low resolution version. If we see in the other materials, the active texture will also have changed to the low res texture. We rebake. Of course this time it bakes much faster because of the reduced size of the texture. We select the mesh with the texture change the texture to the low resolution version, hide the materials mesh, and we see that we can reduce the texture resolution without any problems. Certainly, these kind of tricks will only work for low poly models with plain colors, but these concepts will help to better understand the process of texture in a character.